Hi everyone, I'm Christopher and this is Grow For Me Gardening. Today, I'm going to be starting more seeds than I have ever started at the same time before. Come on along. So welcome back to our basement greenhouse. Behind me, you can see some pansies that are definitely ready to get out in the next week or two. They'll be going in containers. But take a look at this. We have the Burna Blue Velvet, probably the most beautiful purple color ever, which fits our theme this year of purples and yellows in the garden. But let me flip the camera around and I'm gonna show you what we're working with today. Before we get started, let's run through what we're planting today. We have some flat leaf parsley, which I'm gonna put into those two tiny containers to go along with the rosemary and oregano that are already growing in the herb area. Then we have dahlia seeds. I am doing 48 cells. I want all these beautiful colors to happen. I can't wait to see what we get. Then we have a black strawberry tomato, a hybrid mini eggplant, and a fire in a way have hot and heavy pepper. I'm gonna split a tray up between Angelica, a biennial, and also hollyhock, which we've done this one before. It's the major at double champagne, beautiful. We're just gonna, we'll find a new spot for those. I'll do a tray of tall blue planet ageratum. This is a really exciting one. I know Eric loves ageratum. And then, African marigold seeds. This one's called Moonlight. I thought the color was really pretty. And again, it kind of fits with that purple and yellow theme that we're going to try. Now down here is the seed starting soil I'm going to be using. This is Coast of Maine's Sprout Island Blend. When you open up this bag, you know it's going to be good because it smells so good. It has all of the goodies from the sea and from the land that are going to give our seedlings the best possible start. So let me get these kind of put away for a minute and start some uh, planting. So this is a little bit left over of the seed starting mix. Add to it our fresh Coast of Maine soil. All right, this might be too much. Pop that in the bin. I didn't plan this out well. Okay, there we go. One of the most random things about building our house was discovering that near the sprinkler hookup for outside, there's a hose bib. So we have a 50 foot hose running across our basement that is live water, as you can see. And it is a game changer as I moisten this soil. You know, we like to make sure we can squish it and no extra water comes out. I always underdo it on the water. And I don't know why, but I'm always assuming I put too much water in, probably because this part gross. <clears throat> Why do I like playing with dirt outside, but I have no interest in playing with it inside? So I actually did pretty well on my first shot, which I'm very proud of. So let me pop these trays in here, fill them up. I'm really excited to start the florette seeds in particular. I feel like, and let me know if you agree, don't you feel like we've all kind of been watching as that beautiful farm has expanded and now the TV shows and now the florette originals coming out. I feel like we've all kind of, kind of like gone along for the ride and it makes me excited to keep going. And you know, how many people that you see online and follow on Instagram and YouTube are gonna be growing these seeds. So it's like this big, huge grow along that we're all doing. So if you notice, I just took another tray on these growies sets and I kind of like tap it in there, kind of levels them out and then I know when I need to add more. Okay, that to the side here and repeat.
there is quite a pile of dirt forming underneath this table. But I don't know. It just makes me feel better to kind of get some of it out of the way in between. Maybe I'm just alone in that. But it really works for me to feel like my work surface is on the clean side. So now what I'm going to do is take my little garden marker that I had just dropped. And I'm just going to poke a little quarter inch hole in each seed tray. These like to be just a little bit covered. And I know they like a little warmth, so I already have my uh, heat mat ready to go. But let's see here, our planting depth, quarter of an inch. That's perfect. All right, we've got our dahlia seeds here. They're beautiful. I'm going to do one in each because I do agree that, you know, there was an investment made in purchasing the dahlias, uh, the seeds, on all of the seeds actually from the Red Originals. But I think there's something to be said for investing in something we can all harvest. And I can't wait to be able to save tubers from our own special dahlia that nobody else has at the end of the season. Now, very interesting. I believe these were going to be 25 in each packet, or there would be 25 seeds in each packet. I feel like I have enough for an entire other tray, including this one I just dropped. Now that would be a wonderful gift if I were able to produce a few more of these. So let's start with the first 48 <laughs> and see what we do. I'm going to tamp these in a little bit just so they're covered. And then we'll top up with some vermiculite, which helps with moisture control. And I believe it helps with algae, but for some reason down here in my little greenhouse, I get quite the algae on some of my seedlings. Oh, sprinkle, sprinkle. Oh, I just realized I haven't mentioned what the date is. Today is actually St. Patrick's Day. And this year, the way that our final frost date and my seed starting schedule go are very holiday focused. Today is eight weeks from the date that I am electing to call our final frost date. Technically, it's around the 4th to the 8th of May here in our area, Zone 6A, 5B. But... Last year, I don't know if anyone remembers me going on and on about that horrible late frost in May. I will not be fooled again. I'm going to use May 12th, which is Mother's Day. This year. And at that point, I'll start hardening off so that we can plant after Memorial Day. And I think that's going to give everything a perfect amount of time to grow, be happy, and provide us with beautiful flowers and food. So... Everybody's been spending money on misters and all these other ways of getting water. But when you own a hair salon, you have a lot of water bottles. And this is actually a continuous spray water bottle. It's a beautiful mist. It's really good for rewetting hair when you're doing a haircut. But also, it gives the most gentle mist for settling in your seedlings. Where are my hairdressers out there? Because they're all going to say the same thing. They've probably been using hair salon sprayers for years. Just got to wait for it to finish then. All right. So I'm going to make myself a tag. And then I'll get situated to start our next seeds.
have filled up some trays. I've got all my seed labels ready to go. I have looked at my flat leaf parsley. I know that it germinates best in the dark, so we're going to poke a little hole in the middle. These are really tiny seeds. So I'm just going to put a couple in here and a couple in here. It does say that they seed best in the dark. So I'm going to cover them up and then I'm actually going to lay something on top of them. Do, do, do. Put them over here. How about this? We'll turn this around and we'll put the thread hook on them. Perfect. And then we'll just leave that like that in the dark until those come up at some point. Next up, we have our half tray. This is what I'm going to do for the black strawberry tomato, the fairy tale eggplant, and the fire and away pepper. So I have my little half tray here, and my little paper towel that looks gross. These are all very similar in planting. They're all a quarter inch deep, and they all like it a little bit warm. So my dahlias are currently on the heat mat, but I figure it's pretty warm in here. So maybe after the dahlias germinate, we'll give these guys a little bit of extra heat. So I put the little poke in each one of these holes. Let's start with our black strawberry. I did get these seeds two years ago, so I think I'm going to put a couple, like three in each hole, just in case they're a little on the old side. Now we have fairy tale eggplant. I'm excited about these. They're supposed to be kind of a mini eggplant. Where are the seeds? There they are. These I'm just going to do two seeds in each. And then our pepper. I like when they come in a little tiny bag that kind of indicates they're going to be spicy and you should be careful with them. Look at how dirty I am. And these seeds are also, I think, a year old, so I'm just going to do three in each. And we'll see what happens. Okay, so a little vermiculite, little mist, and these will go up in the Aggie system. So in case you need a little reminder on what I'm using as far as my seed starting trays are concerned, I'm using the Grow E system. I have been using this for a couple of years now. I love it. It's easy. It's pretty foolproof. What it starts with is a reservoir. Then you have a riser that goes on top of the reservoir. Then you have a capillary mat, which has a longer side that tucks down into the reservoir. And then on top of that goes your seed tray and your humidity dome. So you can technically start your seeds without the bottom part attached, but I like to get everything done and ready so I know how much space it's gonna take up, I know where it's gonna go, and this all goes under the heat light or grow light, and I will fill the reservoir up with water. The pansies, they're taking water about one or 
probably every other day, if not every day, because they are so ready to come out of those seed trays. This I probably won't fill for probably five days. And then once plants start growing, they take the water up and using it and it goes a little bit faster. But we have three more trays to finish. I'm very excited. Let's get these cooking. Next up is the African marigold seed called Moonlight. I fell in love with this color. This is probably what inspired me the most on the yellow portion of our purple and yellow uh, plantings. So this is 1 16th of an inch deep. To me, that means press it in the soil. I, I don't think that it really needs too much. Oh, these are cool seeds. They look kind of like little matchsticks. I am going to take two per cell here. Kind of stick them on top and mush them a little bit. There's actually quite a bit of seed left in here. So I'm going to hold on to these. And if these start germinating really well, I'm kind of leaving myself the option of growing more if I want to. But these could be really cool. Let's see what they do. Just going to tap these guys in there. Give them a little vermiculite. Mist, 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 mist. Put them under the grow light. Almost done here. We've got the tall blue planet, ageratum. Oh, it's a bag within a bag. That usually means tiny seeds or spicy seeds. Let's see here. Oh, we got lots. Tiny little black seeds. Not black. Very, very tiny grace. Wow, really tiny seeds. This is going to be fun. And I'm just going to lightly sprinkle upon the top here. It says that light aids in germination for these, that you should mist to avoid upsetting the soil enough to cover them. So let's keep our fingers crossed here. I'm excited to try these out. We've tried other ageratums that are short, but these get a little bit taller. Because it says that light aids in germination, I'm gonna be much lighter handed with my vermiculite. I don't want to mess up with these seeds because, you know, Eric's not always so enthusiastic about seeds, but he really is excited about these. Before I get the humidity dome on those guys, I'm going to finish up this last tray that I'm going to be doing half and half with Angelica and Hollyhocks. These are both technically biennial, I believe, although these major red hollyhocks, they bloomed the first year for us. So I'm not sure exactly what that's about, but I'm going to be a little heavy with my starting of the Angelica. These have been in the refrigerator for a while. It's one of those ones that needs a really kind of complicated seed starting stratification. So what I'm going to do is put a couple extra in there in case my stratification wasn't the right kind um, or not enough for these particular seeds. Um, I have high hopes. I think it's going to be great. I think seed starting is made sometimes to be a little bit complicated. I think it's usually just light, no light, bury them, don't bury them, give them some vermiculite. They're fine. And this one, quarter inch deep. For the hollyhocks. Oh, these were so beautiful last year. We had them behind tottering by Gently Rose. Um, and that combination of that creaminess and the yellow rose were very, very complimentary. We also had a lot of verbena around these, and that was also a big, big, big success. So tamp, 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 tamp. And then we'll vermiculite, vermiculite. I will say that vermiculite goes really far. I think I've had this bag for two years now, and I thought I won't need to get another one for this season. Probably next year I'll have to get some more. So we're giving them our little bit of a mist. Love these misters. Can't say enough about them. We'll get the humidity domes, get the reservoir and the seed tray risers in there. And I'll give you a little tour of what we have done today. This is the full tray of the Moonlight Marigold. This is the half tray of Angelica and half tray of the Hollyhocks. 
course, we have the three trays of pansies, the two full trays, 24 each, of the petite florette dahlias. Then we move over here and we have the three different veggies, the tomato, eggplant, and pepper. Below that is the full tray of ageratum. Here in the dark is the parsley. And look at that. The oregano and rosemary that I started a while ago are doing well. This is the same rosemary that I planted last year. We realized we only needed two plants. We used it, but we didn't use it that much. Well, thank you very much for joining me on my adventure of starting all of these different varieties of eight week before the final frost seeds. And I'm looking forward to two weeks from now starting some zinnias and other six week plants. And then I believe I only have one four week and that's a cypress vine. So I'll bring you along for some of those and give you some updates along the way. But again, I am Christopher and this is Grow For Me Gardening. Thanks for growing with us. Thank you.